what's going on guys this is uh benji i have a, another commission that i finished up for shane so shane wanted me to do one of his hilts he has a few uh that he had in mind and he was like you know what let's do this and this is the uh star killer the force unleashed 2 promo saber you guys know the force unleashed games star killer character um he has a few different lightsabers um, two games couple different lightsabers in them <laughs> but uh this this design was from the promotional trailer for the game the second game so this is kind of what they showed him he had two of these in the second game's uh trailer i love the design it's a really cool lightsaber design the pommels are really cool everything about it was just i, I, I fell in love i love it uh he doesn't actually use these in the game <laughs> it's just in the trailers but of course you know when we see a new lightsaber we love it and we want to want to mess with it so again this is the uh sk2 the rogue apprentice this is the v2 so i have a v1 um the core band these are you know distributed by core band i have the v1 which i've had for a while i love it you know what i mean it's it's one of my more favorites of the uh of this tf youtube promo style saber until until shane sent me this one and i was like dang it now i want that one because <laughs> this is it's really nice. Solo's Hold has done a version of theirs, which is really nice. Uh, Saber Forge has a version which I have, um, but this one's this this one is is a definite step up from the first version. So some subtle differences. When I saw them real quick, obviously the emitter is a little bigger. Um, the neck area is different, and of course those jewels are different and the control boxes are different so oh and the size of pommel too and pommel end cap so this is probably a, the new one is definitely a little better sized this one i still really enjoy um, but it is a very slim slender hilt honestly i feel like it is along the lines of like a vader's vault size hilt so this is one that i did uh my wrap this is my my little signature Star Killer style rap <laughs> that I that I invented, but uh, I think it looks cool. It's fun, you know. what I mean, it makes it look a little bit better than the normal the normal leather wrap you would uh, you would do on pretty standard style wrap up. You know? But since in game his is a little messed up and wrapped and double wrapped and all that stuff, it looked cool. I never really did it to my liking until I tried this this at one point and. Um, yeah, it turned out pretty cool. So what I did was I did that for him as well. This we had, uh, I believe this is Oxblood color. This wraps from Defcon, um, Defcon Bird on uh, eBay, who supplies leather uh, strips. I suggest everyone who's asked me about leather and all that stuff, I'm like, look, these are very reasonably priced. They're already cut. You just got to trim to your hilt specific. So it feels really good. I weathered it, uh, hydrated it, and I scuffed it up, you know, put a couple couple cuts in it every every now and then you know just kind of make it look worn and used now Shane wanted this lightsaber to be weathered but not be heavily weathered he wanted it to still have kind of a shine to it so that's a, even more difficult <laughs> to do because you got to weather it then you got to take it down all that stuff but I think I found a really good um, middle ground for that you know it's subtle but you can see it you can see there's weathering in cracks and crevices and all that good stuff the pommel is always really fun to weather and that turned out pretty good, if I do say so myself. I enjoy doing those. So this has a CFX install. Only thing he really uh, wanted was the jewel to be uh, lit up. So I have a, um, you don't ever have to do this. Uh, take this guy out. But I uh, designed in the holder for my pixel connector uh, also to hold your jewel uh, backlit LED there. So you don't ever have to mess with that. You do also have this guy right here, which is not a uh, see-through gem, you know? So if you ever want to mess with that and swap them out, there you go. Real quick, I did a custom chassis because that's my favorite and I refuse to let chassis leave my desk that are plain. <laughs> I just I have too much pride in my, in my game now. I'm like, no, nope, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna do a chassis. I want it to look good on the inside just as much as the outside. So with this, you got, this is the one thing I liked about this um, second version, the V2, is it's all the way through to the bottom of the pommel will fit a 28 millimeter speaker setup. 
So this other one, I have a speaker pod and like the threads are super long <laughs> and it's very, very tight in there. This is a very tight install I'd like to redo at some point, but enough of that. Um, this is what I came up with for this chassis. I tried to do something a little different each time and try to match things and kind of make it specific to the hilt, to the character maybe, and just kind of try to find that, find that motif that fits it. And I feel like I did that pretty well. I did a jewel, cause you know, I like to bedazzle these chassis every now and then. So I figured this jewel right up in here, let's try to match it a little bit in the chassis. I love throwing gemstones and copachones and all that stuff in chassis. It really tickles my fancy. Uh, you got your CFX in here. The CFX and the cradle was very tight. So this board had to be because of the resistors on the side are super close. I had to file a corner down a little bit on that, which is pretty old school technique, but the board is E6000 down. So if you don't ever really want to pry this board up, it's fine where it's at. If you absolutely had to, you could, but I would suggest if, if uh, to get like the USB uh, access if you really wanted to. Um, whenever you put it back down, I would E6000 it again. You don't want this board to pop up um, and you know have it to where it interferes with putting the body on because it is, it's an extremely tight fit. I mean, which that's how you want your chassis anyways. You want it to be super snug going in. So you got your SD card access right there. It's very, very simple. Battery is also very, very simple. So spring side's the negative, um, flat side is negative. The nipple is positive. I suggest, my batteries are pretty ugly, sorry, I apologize. But I always suggest that if you have a sticker on your battery, um, I usually kind of rem remove them because they will kind of wear and tear over time and it's just less ugly anyways. But if you do have a sticker on your battery, face the sticker in the cradle. So that way, whenever you put the battery in. As long as she lives, I will always control you. That way it's just smooth and easy for the uh, the body to go on and off. So what I did was, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on because you know, there's not much more to it than that. I drilled and tapped a chassis retention screw right there in the middle of the threads. So don't ever touch that. That's fine the way it is. And then the other thing I did was this right here. I'm gonna probably E6000 it and kind of have it permanently down because over time, just swinging it around, I've loosened it up even if it's tightened down. But what it does is this little ring here goes threads down, right? And then that allowed me to, when you take this jewel out, I can slide this bit down. I have a drill and tapped for the retention for your pixel connector slash uh, holder for, for that guy. So. There's only two drill and taps that I had to do on this hilt. But again, like I said, you don't ever really have to, you don't ever have to touch those. And I'm probably gonna make this guy right here, I'm gonna E6000 it down to where it won't loosen unless you really, really want it to. All right, so let's go ahead and fire her up and then I'll put a blade in. This has a one inch blade socket, so one inch blade. Uh, this is my blade plug. I guess I can make you one chain. We didn't really talk about that. Uh, I usually just, obviously I charge uh, money, <laughs> charge you some money to make it one. But um, I'm, almost, I'm almost out of parts, I'm almost out. I don't have many left at the moment, so we'll have to talk about that. But anyways. <laughs> Sounds really good. You got a 28 millimeter Smuggler's Outpost speaker. And I do enjoy this pommel design. It's really cool. It has, it's like it's raised up and then it has holes on the side of it so they're hidden sound venting aside from that sort of in the middle. Starkiller uh, sound fonts are a little more on the quiet end, but uh, for like the hum and whatnot, it's one of those. But um, you have a plunger system in the box, which is really cool. So the bottom section is auxiliary. And the top is your power. So power 
on, power off, you know. See how the light's going off? So I was talking about this on the, uh, to you Shane, the colors, if it's a blue, um, it won't really show up as well. So whenever it lights up, that's the white running through it. See that? That's the white from the blaster coming down. But if it's on a red, this thing's fully bright. Other colors will dim accordingly. It just depends. All right. So the uh, set screw size is a little different from, I don't believe, I, believe, I don't know if this is a 7 eighths. I can't remember what that is, but just get a multi-tool. Um, I don't think the box comes with them which they probably should, but it's, uh, it's definitely not a um, 832nd size retention screw. That guy right in there, that's for your uh, blade. You got a CC Sabers lit NeoPixel connector in there. Fixed up my one inch blade, so I'm not gonna use the demo blade on this one. As much as I enjoy the demo blade, I like to show off uh, these Sabers in, um, you know, and all their blade glory and all their blade length. So, it's just, it feels really good. See the light? These are going to be easy to hit, depending on how you hold it, you know? things like your blade timing, uh, the blaster bolt impacts, your lockup, which I will make bigger probably. Right now it just, it hits the whole blade and then it focuses it on the center. And if you can see it like that. Which is a fun little lockup. Got a blade tip, blade drag. I don't know how you can see it. That font is uh, Secret Apprentice by Cyberphonic Fonts. It's the TFU2 version of his uh, font. Does the weather ever get better here? So these are uh, stock sound, the, all your stock sound fonts are still on there. Um, on the stock package for Crystal Focus, there is uh, a Force Unleashed 2 um, font on there, which is pretty cool. So it's the Camino font where you got the rain going in the background. Oh, 
that's cool. Alright, so I will set it up to have different um, <laughs> different stuff on the uh, configuration. I'll, I'll talk to you about that too. I just want to show you real quick. So, But I do have you set up for changing your color wheel. It's press and twist. And I'll definitely change that. But see how the blade affects the color of the LED? That's just the name of the game with this. Uh, with these jewels. Very, very well lit up on a red. There we go, dude. Um, again, like I said, I will get with you on which fonts you've purchased uh, to throw on there. I'll teach you how to use everything. I just wanted to show real quick, um, you know, in action. I've sent you a video or two, but, um, you know, give you a little bit more of an in-depth look at it. See how much that thing lights up on a red, though? Oh, you know what? Let me show you another font. Sound bank selection. Grammy. Grammy. Which is a very basic. Just give you a different example of a saber on um, the sound font. There we go, dude. I hope you like it, and I'll get with you on it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next video, may the force be with you. You stuck-up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerd herder. Scruffy-looking. <laughs>